What's up everybody, how's it going? It's been a while since I've posted a video on YouTube, I've been busy with a ton of stuff, but I'm back and I want to take a moment to share my thoughts about what's going on with tech right now. Because it's no secret that the economy as a whole is currently going through some sort of a recession, if you don't want to flat out call it a recession. It's going through a big downturn, and the tech industry is being hit the hardest right now. And we're not just talking about small companies or startups like we were a few months ago. No, we're talking about big companies too, like fan companies. Left and right, you're seeing layoffs, hiring freezes, revenue numbers going down, stock prices plummeting. It's a complete bloodbath, and there's just a lot of panic in our industry. Which is funny because it feels like for the past decade or so, our industry has had the opposite of panic. Our industry has just been like, you know, always happy, always, you know, bullish. Everything was going great for software engineers. We were treated like kings and queens, but now no longer, sort of. So what's going on? Should we genuinely be worried? Let me give you my analysis. First, it's important to really look at what happened over the last 10 years, what brought us to where we are. Because the last 10 years, like I just mentioned, were one of the greatest 10 years in the history of the world for an industry, in this case, the tech industry. And that was largely because tech and Web2, Web2 being you know all these companies that emerged from the internet when the internet became really freely accessible to the population at large, all these Web2 companies either were born in the 2010s or were reaching a big growth phase in the 2010s. Like if you imagine, you know, tech company's growth curve as an S curve that is flat, then goes up, and then is flat again. The 2010s, we were either like at the very beginning of the S curve or in the middle of the S curve. And so you had just growth after growth after growth, year after year after year. You had billions of people across the world being onboarded to the internet, being onboarded to things like social media, things like uh, mobile devices. And so all these companies, these tech companies, were the beneficiaries of just this perfect timing for the industry. And who were the downstream beneficiaries of this growth and perfect timing? Software engineers. In high demand, extremely rare to find, huge compensation packages. And this golden bull run of the 2010s really hit its climax during the COVID pandemic. Because during the COVID pandemic, two things happened. First of all, everybody was stuck at home. And that, ironically, benefited the grand majority of tech companies. People had way more time to spend online, watching Netflix, YouTube, chatting on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, ordering items from Amazon. And so all these tech companies just blew up even more. They were really at the peak of that S-curve of growth during COVID. And then on top of that, during COVID, you had the U.S. government that printed something like 40% of the entire U.S. dollars that were ever printed in history during that year. So you had tons of new money being injected into the system. You had super low interest rates. So consumers were just spending, 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 growth, growth, growth for the tech companies. Venture capitalists were throwing money, throwing money, throwing money at anything that resembled tech. So you had new companies popping up left and right with so much money from venture capitalists that they were able to stimulate or fake growth, but it looked like growth, so everybody was happy. And again, who benefited from all this? Software engineers. And then finally, at the end of 2021, everything kind of popped. The infamous tech bubble finally popped. And so a few things happened at that point that caused the bubble to pop. Number one, COVID sort of kind of ended. I know that COVID is still around, but you know things opened up and let's be real, most people these days kind of have forgotten about COVID and that hurt a lot of these tech companies that had benefited during COVID when people were at home. Then a lot of these tech companies actually reached the end of their absurd growth phase just because of mere timing. Like for example, you know, Facebook, Netflix 
have finally reached a sort of plateau in their monthly active users or monthly subscribers. And that's not necessarily a testament to the companies, you know, not performing well or doing something wrong. It's more that when you've got like 3 billion monthly active users like Facebook, there's only so much more that you can grow. And, you know, in the case of Facebook, it's just like you probably cannot grow anymore. So companies kind of reached this sort of a peak, right? Natural peak. And you had raging inflation, not only in the U.S., but also across the world. And so the Fed has decided to try to combat inflation by increasing interest rates. And so over the last few months, interest rates have gone up a ton with no sign of stopping, at least not for the next couple of months. And so what has happened because of the combination of these three things? Well, companies are making less money. Venture capitalists aren't investing nearly as much money in companies. And so the dominoes start to fall. Everything starts to crumble. First, you've got the companies that are completely starved. All those Silicon Valley startups that made zero money and that were entirely relying on venture capitalists, they get their oxygen supply cut off and suddenly they're just screwed, to put it simply. And so they either shut down or do mass layoffs because they were grossly negligent and hired way too many engineers. And then you've got the big tech companies a little bit later who start to suffer a similar fate. Not the same one, because big tech companies have tons of money. You know, Google, Apple, Facebook, they still have tons of money. So they don't necessarily need to lay off people. They don't necessarily need to shut down, not at all. But they start doing hiring freezes because they can't just grow, grow, grow by hiring left and right and paying these absurd compensation packages. They start to kind of tame all of their big perks, benefits, and compensation packages. So you kind of see a little bit of stabilization there. Like things are not as rosy as they used to be. And some of them are realizing that they have a big productivity problem. Because during this you know, golden bull run of tech over the last decade, it was just so easy for them to make money that software engineers really were just let loose and they could do whatever they wanted. And that's how you started to get some software engineers just completely taking advantage of the system. You hear all these people who work multiple jobs and work just a few hours per week at each job, which is like a joke and a half when you think about it, like with regards to the companies that they're working at. You have all these companies that are just like treating employees, not really like employees, but as like kings and queens, like I was saying before. And so this is kind of coming to a stop now. You're hearing a lot of people who work at these big tech companies saying like, oh my God, the culture is getting a little bit more intense, finally, for companies like Google, uh, where it wasn't intense at all. And so all that to say, you get a lot of panic in the software engineering community, in the tech community, and you start to wonder like, what's going to happen? Is it just going to all crash and burn? Is the tech industry as we know it over? Are software engineers doomed? What's going to happen? And this is where you have to be very rational. You have to use common sense. You cannot let pessimism cloud your judgment. And you have to look at things objectively. The field of software engineering is not any less important than it was a year ago or two years ago. In fact, it's probably more important because tech is still spreading across the world, across every other industry. So software engineers are still very much needed. Then on top of that, you've got sub-industries of software engineering that are kind of nascent or experiencing their own little growth phases. And they are actually, you know, like requesting food or oxygen. Like they are growing a ton. For example, machine learning AI has gone through a huge sort of growth phase and improvement in quality over the last year or so. And it's very clear that if you're in machine learning or AI, you are going to be in high demand right now. You're probably not experiencing the same pain that normal software engineers are experiencing. If you're in blockchain, you know, crypto, Web3, same thing. Even though token prices might not reflect it, but tons of blockchain and crypto companies right now are heads down, building, growing, and hiring a lot of tech talent. And even talking about general software engineers, a lot of industries or companies that might have been tech adjacent or that might have forgotten about tech during the last decade are finally waking up and realizing that they need tech talent, and so they're still hiring. If anything, ironically, the companies that are being the most affected, where things seem the most gloomy, are 
the companies that we know and love as primarily tech companies, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazon. But even that, common sense dictates that it's temporary. When things start to shape up with the economy at large, and of course, we're not even going to begin talking about, you know, international relations type of things like the war in Ukraine. But when things start to, you know, take shape a bit more and rebound a bit more, these companies are going to restabilize and start to hire again and so on and so forth. So all this sort of rant to say that if you are a software engineer and you're panicking right now, don't. We are all in this together. We're going to weather this storm. It just means that a few things have changed. Number one, job security is probably the most valuable perk or benefit you can have. So if you are a software engineer working right now and you have a job with high job security, consider yourself fortunate and try to preserve that job security. If you're in a job that doesn't have high job security or you're out of a job and you're looking for a job, things might be tougher than they were before. You might have to look harder. You might have to look more broadly at other companies. You might have to prep for interviews harder. By the way, if you're a software engineer preparing for your interviews, do check out my company, AlgoExpert. Go to AlgoExpert.io and use the promo code CLEMCLEM for a discount on the platform because the bar, the hiring bar might be higher, but things will be okay. All hope is not lost. And if you want one little you know, data point that is actually kind of bullish, it's that we have seen on AlgoExpert that even though we have been impacted over the last few months, finally, because before it didn't really seem like we were impacted at all, but Programming Expert, our Learn to Code product, doesn't really seem to have been impacted. So the point that I'm trying to make is it seems like tons of people are still like, very much interested right now, rightfully so, in learning to code. And so the future for software engineering, I think, is bright. It's probably just the very short term, like the next few months, up to like a year, that's going to be a little bit, you know, more sobering. And we're just going to have to buckle up and weather the storm together. That's all I've got for you on this topic. Let me know your thoughts. Are you one of these people who's panicking? Are you not panicking? Do you agree with my analysis? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures. And I will see you in the next video.